How many of you love to pray? <laughs> I know that's why you're here, is because you love to pray. And we know that God does what prayer does. Amen. And you know, Jesus spoke a parable like this in Luke chapter 18. He said that men should always pray and not to faint, not to give up. Amen. Because prayer changes everything. Hallelujah. Prayer changes everything. And so we're getting ready to pray right now. And we say, oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you for the power of intercession. And thank you for the power of agreement. Lord Jesus, you said if any two of us agree on earth is touching anything they ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. So Holy Spirit, miss right now. Let's welcome Holy Spirit here into our midst. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We welcome you. We welcome you. And we give you thanks and praise today. And Lord, we thank you. We Hey, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Let them that hate God flee before him. And Lord, we thank you that as smoke is driven away, so drive the enemy away. And right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord Jesus, the word of God tells us that I have put my words in your mouth. Hallelujah. And I have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. Lord, we are planting and establishing the heavens with your word right now. And Lord, you said that and we can lay the foundations in the earth. And we declare your kingdom come. Yes, declare it. Your kingdom come. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, we drive the enemies away, the enemies of God, as we bind demonic spirits of jealousy and rage in Jesus' name. Lord, we bind crime and violence. We bind spirits of hatred, prejudice, racism, and bigotry. Lord, we bind envy and strife we bind chaos and every evil work lord as me, as wax melts before god and before the fire so let the wicked perish in the presence of the lord so god we thank you that you are a consuming fire and you are a jealous god and we thank you and we welcome you Jehovah Nissi, you're our banner, you're our protector, and you are our victory. And Lord, we thank you that your banner over us is love. We thank you, Lord, that it is a bloodstained banner. And you are our protector, you are our shield, and you're our buckler. Lord, there is a shield about us because you are our glory and you're the lifter of our heads. And we declare today that you are our victory. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Lord, we thank you that you have given us faith. You have given all of us the measure of faith because without faith, it is impossible to please you. But when we come to you, we believe that you are and that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And Lord, who are you? You are everything that we need. How many of y'all know he's everything that we need? You are everything that we need, Lord, and we thank you. And Lord, we, are the, we, are, we will confess today that it was not by our sword that we won the battle against coronavirus. It was not by our sword, Lord, that we won the battle against sickness and disease nor did our arm bring us the victory. But Lord, we thank you right now that it was your right hand. How many of y'all know it was the right hand of God? It, it, was, it was your arm, it was your arm, and it was the light of your face, God, because you loved us. 
You say, I have loved you with an everlasting love. How I many you know our God loves us? He loves us so much that he gave us Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, that you loved us so much that you came to this sinful world and you died on the cross in our place. And thank you, Jesus, that you went to hell in our place. But we thank you, Holy Spirit, for raising our Jesus, raising him from the dead. And now Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he ever lives to make intercession for us. Thank you, Jesus, for praying for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you pray for us. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you thanks, Lord, because we know it was not by our might nor our power, but it was by your spirit. And we thank you right now. And God, we praise you, Lord. Lord, we know and we trust you. How many of you trust the Lord? We trust you. Lord, we trust you. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And we thank you right now that you are our God and you are our King. And we thank you, Lord, that you decree victories for the church. Lord, we thank you that we have the revelation that Jesus is the Christ. He's the son of the living God. And Lord, because of that revelation, Lord, you build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. And Lord, we thank you. That is through you, we push back our enemies. Hallelujah. Through your name, through the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we trample our foes. Because how many, you know, the name of Jesus is above every name that is named. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. The name of Jesus is Lord in, is in three realms, in the heavens, in the earth, and under the earth. Lord, in every tongue shall confess Jesus, you are Lord. How I many you know Jesus is Lord? Jesus, you are Lord. And thank you, Jesus, that we have what we say. Because you said in the word, have faith of God. Have the faith of God. And Lord, you said... Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, mountains of doubt, fear, unbelief, mountains of sickness and disease, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And we will not doubt in our hearts, but we believe those things which we say shall come to pass, and we have whatever we say. And Lord, we say what your word says. Lord, and we thank you, Lord that heaven and earth will pass away one day, but your word will never pass away. So Lord, we stand on your word. We stand on what the word of God says. And Lord, we thank you for the power of your word because it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it pierces the darkness. It shatters the darkness and it divides the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Jesus, you're the son of God. And Lord, you have passed into the heavens. And God, this evening we come to you boldly to the throne of grace. So we can find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. How many of you need the help of God? We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we put no trust in our bow. Because, and our sword is, does not bring us victory. Lord, we thank you because we know the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty. How I many you know we have mighty weapons? Mighty weapons of warfare. We have the power of the blood of Jesus. We have the power of the name of Jesus. We have the power of the word of God. And Lord, we thank you that we have powerful angels. How I many you thank the Lord that you have powerful angels? that surround us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, as we, uh, as we pray and as we declare and speak the word of God. Those powerful angels, they excel in strength. They excel in strength. And they enforce the word of God. They enforce the will of God. And they enforce the plan of God. So, Lord, we thank you for those mighty, powerful weapons. And we give you thanks, Lord. Lord, you said I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And you said, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if any two of you agree, how many of you agree with the word of God? How many of you agree? We agree with you, Jesus. We agree with you, Jesus. And we agree that without you, we can do nothing. We agree. But with you, we can do all things. 
We can do all things because you are the one who gives us the strength to do it. And so, God, we thank you. Lord, as we come together and as we agree together, Lord, we know that your will and your purposes are being done in this earth realm. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord for the power of prayer. We continue to pray and stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, how many of you glad to be here tonight? Yes, me too. Uh, the psalmist declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because there's going to be strength here tonight for you and I. And how many of you just, just lift your hands and receive that strength today? Because the Bible said what two or three are gathered in his, in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So he doesn't be here for nothing. He's here for uh, to strengthen us and to bless us tonight. Amen. Well, let's continue to pray tonight. The Bible said if my people who are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves, pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, said then we will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sins and he will heal the land. So, Father, I thank you tonight, God, as we are your people, Lord. I thank you for healing the land, healing us, oh God, healing us from coronavirus, healing us from disease and sickness, God. Thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, we can declare our healing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We know that death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, Father, we give you praise and give you honor tonight that you yourself, Jesus, you bore our sin in your own body, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness and by whose stripes that we were healed. Thank you. Lord, as Pastor Jerry been ministering, he ministered Sunday about the blood of Jesus. So I know there's victory in the blood. I just thank you, Lord, for the victory that's in the blood of Jesus, Lord. We cover our minds in the blood of Jesus. We cover our spirit, souls, and body, and mind, will, and motion in the blood of Jesus today, God. Father, we cover our city. We cover this service. Oh, God, we cover the churches in the blood of Jesus, Lord. And we declare and decree tonight that the blood prevail against the hand of the enemy, God. Lord, we are here tonight gathered together in your name to come against every enemy that's coming against us, Lord. We declare and decree tonight, God, that the weapons that's been formed against us, they're not going to prosper. We hear the condemning and show them to be in the wrong in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I thank you. You said, whosoever shall say to mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and doubt not in their hearts, but believe that those things which they say, they shall come to pass. So, Father, we believe that mountains are melting today in your presence today here under the amphitheater, that mountains are mel melting today in your presence. Lord, thank you. I don't care what kind of mountain it is. It's got to melt today because we are in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm, sickness, disease, hurt, pain has to go in Jesus' name. All infirmity has to go in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you said in your word, God, that submit to you, resist the enemy, and he has to flee in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we look to the hills from which cometh our help tonight. Our help cometh from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. Lord, I thank you that you would not allow our foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is the shade upon our right hand. The sun will not smite us by day, nor the moon by night. You shall preserve us from evil. You shall preserve our souls. You shall preserve our going out and our coming in from this day forward and even forevermore. Thank you for being our eternal God. We give you praise today, God, and we give you honor this evening, God, that you are our God and we trust you. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways we acknowledge you, O oh God. 
Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the prayers of the righteous shall prevail, God. So, Lord, we release prayers today, O oh God, against the enemy tonight. And we thank you that for the turnarounds and the breakthrough tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We stand tonight, and having done all to stand against the wiles of the enemy tonight, in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I'm so happy tonight because all, hey, A double L L, all the promise of God to us is yes and amen. I want to know that anybody got a promise tonight from the Lord. Hallelujah. Where we can stand on it and we can believe it and we can speak it and we can declare it and we can decree it and we can proclaim it. And I tell you, it'll come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, because he's good to us. He's a good, good father. And, Father, I thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi, our banner and protector, Lord. I thank you for being Jehovah Shama, which is always present. Jehovah Shalom, which is our peace. Lord, and I thank you right now. Oh, God, all through these cities, God, this uh, having uh, uh, demonic activities like murdering spirits, God. I command them now to be thy removed. And Lord, I speak peace in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I pray tonight that Jesus will arise in these cities and every enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. Thank you, O oh God, that you are Lord and you are our Savior, Lord. And thank you tonight that we can call upon your name. The Bible declare unto us, call upon the Lord. And he said, call upon him. And he will answer us and show us great and mighty name. Great and mighty things. Thank you, Lord, as the Victory Church call upon you tonight, God. Lord, show us some great and mighty things tonight, God. Do miracles tonight. Let us see signs, wonders, and miracle night in our midst in Jesus' name, God. Lord, we thank you for holding back the rain tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come tonight and worship you in spirit and in truth, God. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. Lord, thank you for loving us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for moving us. From glory to glory, God, because we are your church, Lord. We are the church of the living God, the pillar of the ground of truth, God. And, Father, I thank you for giving us a light to shine in darkness right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we're going to let our light shine wherever we go. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus wherever we go. The Bible said, if Jesus be lifted up, he'll draw all men. Father, I thank you, Lord, oh, because there are needs all around us, oh, God. And when we lift you up, we can speak healing. And when we lift you up in Walmart, God, we can declare that you are our joy, God. Lord, we can declare that you will show us the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore, God. So, Lord, we have things to shout about we have something to rejoice about because our god reign our god live oh he's mighty and he's powerful he's awesome hallelujah father i thank you lord for moving all the mountains i thank you for my turnaround i thank you for my breakthrough tonight god i thank you right now that heaven and earth belongs to you oh god and the fullness thereof. And I command every enemy that's holding on to those that belong to the church, the devil, to loose them right now and let them go free. Lord, I thank you that I believe tonight as we call them forth from the north to south and the east and the west, I believe that chains of abundance are being broken. Yokes are being destroyed tonight. Shackles are being loosed tonight. But we are calling them forth right now in Jesus' name, God. Father, build your church tonight, God. Oh, build the church of the living God. Lord, if you don't build the city, God, the city will be just like Solomon Gomorrah, God. 
Oh, God, but I thank you, and it was destroyed. But when you build the city, you build the city with salvation. How many of you believe that God is building a city here in Camden? I believe that our wall going to be walls of salvation. Oh, God, in the south, in the north, in the east, in the west, they are building walls of salvation, Lord. Thank you that our gates are big gates of thanksgiving, God. Thank you, Lord, that when we come into the courts of the Lord, it's going to be praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise here tonight in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we're going to lift you up tonight above sickness. We're going to lift you up above sadness. We're going to lift you up, oh God, above all the ashes, God, because you can give us joy for our ashes in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise, God, that we are here to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, God. But, Lord, we declare tonight that it's you, O oh God, that worketh in us both the will and to do of your good pleasure, Lord. So, Father, get pleasure out of us tonight, God. Lord, we'll follow the cloud by day and the fire by night, God. For you are an awesome God, Lord. Lord, release your fire tonight and burn up everything that's not like you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that we are in your presence, God. Lord, you said, how can a young man clean his, his, his ways, Lord, by heeding to the word of God? Lord, we love your word. But Lord, your word is powerful. It's quick and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, God. So, Lord, we raise the sword high tonight. And, Lord, we believe that enemy is being moved out of this area in Jesus' name, God. Thank you, O oh Father, for being to us tonight. Oh, God, Jehovah, our Rapha, our shepherd, Lord. Jehovah, Rohi, our shepherd. Jehovah, Rapha, our healer tonight, God. Oh, God, we thank you that we are lifting you up tonight above every circumstance and every situation, God. And, Father, I believe right now, oh, God, as we look into the throne room today, God, we come boldly tonight to the throne room that we might find grace and mercy and help to the time of our needs tonight, God. Thank you tonight, God, that we can walk by faith tonight, and we don't have to walk by what we see. We don't have to walk by what we hear, God. Oh, because, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise, God that you have given us faith, God, because without faith it's impossible to please you, God. Lord, and I thank you that we use our faith tonight, and we believe right now that you, oh God, is rising up against our enemy, God. You are working. You are working at night. You are working at day, God. You are working on our behalf, God. And we believe tonight, God, that things are changing if you believe things are changing in your life, in your city, oh, I praise God that change is coming tonight. I believe the wind is blowing tonight in my family. I believe the wind of change is blowing over our church, Lord. Lord, I thank you that yesterday is gone and tomorrow is not promised to us. But right now, change is taking place right now. Lord, I thank you right now that my heart is rejoicing tonight, God. Because you are God. Thank you that you are doing great and mighty things tonight in our midst, in our family, in our city, God. Because you are God that never changed. And, Lord, I thank you that all your promises are yes and amen to us. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. If you are happy about the Lord tonight, let's give him some praise again. Thank you. God, God be the glory tonight. You be blessed tonight in Jesus' name.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Victory. Glad to see you today. Hope that you're doing well. How many are glad to be here in God's house today? Isn't it a wonderful day? This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and are glad. God, I'm so grateful and thankful for who you are. God, we bless you today. We worship you and honor you. We declare you are king and Lord of all. Lord, have your way today, God, in my life and my and my family and my business, God, and my in my school. God, have your way, God, we say. Let your will be done today, God, here at our church and our city and our state. God, have your way today, God, we declare. We want what you want. Say that tonight, God. I want what you. He's a good father. Do you believe that? Amen. And he's doing good things, he, and he's got good things in store for you today. And uh, I just wanted to tell you today that God loves you. Somebody just say that God loves me. <laughs> he does love you so much, and we are. And, I mean. I am so excited about this past Sunday and Easter and uh, celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. It was an amazing service. I hope you didn't miss it. It was a powerful time in God's presence. Uh, but, man, we're excited about what God has for you today, right now. Amen. Are you ready to praise? All right. Presence. 
I believe you're my source. I believe you're my strength. An ever present help in time of need. I believe you are provider. I believe you are protector. You're my shepherd, my fortress. You're everything. You're my savior. You're my Lord. You're my everything. As I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the high. No reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon. My soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. Carry the burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation. Yes, Lord. To let it all go. So I see it now, and I'm laying. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. and help in our time of need. That veil was torn from top to bottom. And the Lord said, come. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you're facing, He is available for you today. His arms are stretched wide. His arms of love and grace and healing are for you today. Somebody just receive that wherever you are. Just lift your hands and say, God, I receive your love. I receive the grace that you've given me. I receive that healing work. I receive that healing work that Christ bore, those stripes that he bore on his back for my healing. I receive that, God. I receive the healing for my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit. God, I receive, God, all that you have for me. And I thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray today. Empower us, God, to do your will and follow your word. Every word. We love you, Jesus. We bless you, God. Come on, wherever you are, just bless the Lord loudly. and Give him some praise. He deserves it. Amen. Hallelujah to the Father. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We love you, Jesus. Well, we bless the Lord today. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Again, we're so grateful for what God has done. So thankful for Jesus. 
And, and we're thankful that he not only uh, uh, died on the cross and rose again, but he sent his Holy Spirit for us today. And because he is here, he lives within us, and we are made alive today through Christ Jesus and the work that he did. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're also grateful to be able to worship together with you guys, not only in song and in word today, but in, in giving. So if this is your time to give, the ushers are going to be ser serving you guys on the parking lot. You know how you can do it here at Victory. There's many ways you can. You can text to give 84321 in your amount, and you can do that there or thevictorychurch.com. You're welcome to do that there as well if you need. If you'd like to, there's that, that option. Or you can give in the parking lot today. The ushers are here. These mighty men of God, some best buddies here. They're awesome. They're ready to serve you in whatever way you need. And as a matter of fact, if you need anything, just, just contact or get their attention. They'll be glad to serve you in whatever way. That's why they're here, and they love to serve you guys in whatever way you need. And uh, so we appreciate them so much. Can we pray today? Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. You are our source. And today, God, we honor you, God, with our giving. We worship you, God, with our tithes, offerings, love, alms, uh, and gifts, God. We bless you today because you've blessed us abundantly, God. We give what you have asked, God, and abundantly more. And we thank you, Lord, that you desire to bless us even more, God. We thank you, God, for this moment. And we pray, God, that today, Lord, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings like you never have before, God, that we can't even contain it. We love you, God, and we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. Well, I have one, one more announcement as well. This Sunday morning, we are... Um, having baptismal service in the main sanctuary at uh, at the 1030 service and we would if you're interested in being a part of the baptismal service uh, i would like for you guys to text pastor jerry uh, 818-4440 and just say i'd like to be baptized and and that text and send that to the to the church zero uh one more time it's one eight four 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 zero. You can text Pastor and let him know that you'd like to be baptized, or if you know someone who needs who would like to be baptized, reach out to Pastor Derry or even or the church office uh, anytime this week and uh, let them know, and we'll prepare that for you. And uh, man, we have we're excited, man. There were people that responded to Christ on Sunday, gave their life to the Lord for the first time. It was an exciting time in God's presence. I saw many hands go up and said, "I want to give my life to the Lord." And so what, what, an, what an honor it would be to be able to see these, uh, these baptized and be able to, to uh, rejoice with them in, in, that, cha in, that, uh, in that showing that the, the new life has come. Amen. And so, uh, so join in with us on Sunday for baptismal service. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. And we're excited about what God has for us. Welcome, Brother William. He's, he's coming up to minister the word. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't see my sand so hold my sand. Well, it's a joy to be always with God's people. Seventy seventy seven years old. And I've been in church seventy seven years. How about that? Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, probably hadn't missed, uh, I don't know, during that 77 years, uh, the the percentage of time that, that I've missed or we as a family have missed has been very mi minuscule. Is that is that a good word? Very, very small amount of time. Gone a lot of times when... Everything was great, gone times when it didn't feel like going, but just kept on going to the house of the Lord because that's what we're supposed to do, amen? Praise the Lord. Before I get started tonight, I have a special prayer request. I had one of our sisters call me later this afternoon, and she really wanted us to pray, and that's, I don't know if, Renee, are you here tonight? If you are, blow your horn. Okay, uh, Sister Renee Mosley 
has been having a lot of trouble with one of her knees and uh, fluid, and they don't know if it's infected and what all. They haven't been able to determine. And then on top of that, she had had a disturbing. She has to go in the morning to St. Vincent to have a surgery on it for trying to correct the problem, and she'd had a, a, a dream that had tried to put fear on her, and I've already prayed with her, but she wanted us to pray for her tonight, so I want us to join our hearts together and say a prayer for Sister Renee, but she, she'll be going up in the morning, so let's just join our hearts right now. Father God, we want to thank you that we hold each other up in the family of God, Lord. That's what we're for, brothers and sisters in the Lord, Lord, to hold each other up and to, Lord, help with faith in people's lives when they're going through something new or something different. So I've already prayed for Renee I have today, but I ask that everyone join me, Lord, right now that we unite our faith to lift her up, that, that this uh, dream that was trying to disrupt or put fear on her, Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Lord, and command it off of her life, Lord God, that has no effect upon her, Lord, whatsoever, Lord, to bring fear and to bring uh, things that would um, harm her. So, and we pray that as she goes, she'll go and the cloud of your peace will be settled upon her, even though to some of us this might not seem like a, a big serious surgery, Lord, because of what's been going on with that situation. Uh, Lord, she's, she's been sort of troubled about it. So we pray that you'll just anoint her right now and bless her in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to speak on a sort of an unusual subject tonight. I'm going to call this sermon Good, Bad Things. Good, Bad Things. And uh, they're not really bad, but I'm going to talk about things that seem bad, that uh, come into the Christian's life, and uh, it, it could be t easy sometimes for us to get so focused upon all the great and mighty things the Lord wants to do for us that we don't see the other side of the coin. And I was really been between two messages before I got up here tonight, and uh, I felt like right toward the end the Lord um, wanted me to speak on this. So that's what we're going to do. Over in uh, Psalm 34 and verse eight, uh, 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Now that is a pretty phenomenal statement there when you stop to think about it and when it says the righteous I think sometimes the terminology involves more than just a person being righteous for a little bit or righteous in a certain area where they've trusted God when it says the righteous it is sort of a um, a word that brings together I believe a, a whole long period of people uh, or of time that people have trusted the Lord over many situations. The righteous, the righteous, not just going through maybe one or two ordeals, but a, a categorization by the writer here uh, defining where a person stands in their journey with the Lord. Now, I've I, of course, got saved at an early age, and, uh, you know, I mean, and if you did as well, you know that you started meeting resistance at an early age. Whenever you got saved, it didn't matter what age it was, oh, I know you still had your childhood, you had things that were fun and all those things, but you also started having to deal, even as a child, with the resistance. And... We can't deny what this says. It says many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. In order to become categorized as a righteous person and in, in, who's been declared in right standing with God, and more times than not, that is not 
just dealing with what the world or the even many of the church's definition of righteous would be. Usually we think about righteous as, uh, you know, doing good and being moral and being ethical and upstanding, and that's all part of it. That's part of the making and the shaping of us as children of God. But the, the, the greater and larger meaning of righteous in the Scripture is, if you study it, is, is a person who is in declared in right standing with God. And in right standing, it's always involving the issue of faith. So there's as many cars out on this par- parking lot tonight and uh, down through the years, I don't know how many different situations of faith we have right now. You might be in a new situation. I know in this season of my life right now that uh, in the last few weeks, I've been having to trust God in a new area. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go to the Lord. Oh, I've been blessed. I, I've been able, as the Lord said, uh, the Lord delivers us out of them all. But I can't tell you how many times I've turned uh, and to the Lord for a certain organ of my body, for a certain situation in the operation of my body or uh, something in my family or in this area or that area. So out here in these cars tonight, there's all kinds of different situations. So right now in my life, in the last few weeks, it's been sort of a little rough patch, something I've never encountered before, you know, in a, in a not down in health or anything, but just, just having to face something that was trying to, you know, make me not, not feel that well and so forth. And so another, another situation where I'm called upon to rise up and trust God for a new area. I wonder if any of you might here tonight in this service be saying, well, you know, Pastor, um, I'm in sort of a new situation. I've got something right now that uh, it's a little different from what I've ever had before, something that I'm having to trust God in a new area for that, that, you know, I haven't really had to deal with this particular situation before. If that's your case, maybe no one here is in that situation. But if that's your case, let me hear your horn blow. Yeah. Yes, it is. Why come the Lord for us to be declared righteous? We go through many situations to see if we're going to take that through to faith till the Lord imputes that righteousness to us, sends His grace, and then brings the deliverance out of that situation, and then we'll go on to another. And we become more and more developed by the Lord as we trust Him for more and more things in our life. There's at least four different situations where, you know, that, that, that can be generalized in which we have to face up to difficulty and resistance. Well, one is simply that, that, that we're in a fleshly body here and when we give our lives to Jesus and what is he calling on us to do? To become the image of Christ. He's calling on us to be formed. In, in Romans chapter 8 it says, um, among those he called and justified and so forth, he predestined that they would be conformed to the image of his son. So when you begin to start being informed and the flesh has to be crucified and died and you have to, in different situations of your life where the flesh wants to rise up uh, and control you or not submit to the will of God, situation after situation, God puts his finger on it and says, okay, we're going to deal with this situation right now. You're going to have to trust me to change you in this area. You have to trust me to make you what I want you to be. And if you go through the scripture, I got another sermon I preach called Miracle Made, that God is seeking to make every one of us into his own individual masterpiece. And the Lord will not relent. He will not stop. Once you give your life to Christ, it's from one thing to another. He says, I'm going to take you on a faith journey and you're going to have to trust me in situation after situation after situation. Once we accomplish and once we become righteous in one area, declared righteous by faith where you've completed trusting God and you've been changed in that area, he said, we're going to move on to something else. And so you have to... Uh, you know, be changed into the image of the Lord. So that's one thing. Another thing is is that when the Lord calls us to do something for His honor and His glory, 
where we have to go out and do something that, that is difficult for our mind or the flesh. You take me, great heroes of the faith like Abraham and those people in Hebrews chapter 11. We talk about their great accomplishments and the great things they did. Some of it required long periods of time. Some of it was in shorter periods of time. But I can assure you that the, that's called the faith chapter, but it's also the grace chapter. Because faith releases grace. Grace is the power that brings it to pass. Faith is the thing that activates the grace. Faith has to go up to heaven and be approved by God. And then God declares if we have authentic faith and if he does, he imputes righteousness to our account in that area. And he says, you're righteous. Now notice it says here, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But why? Because that person has determined that through thick or thin, come hell or high water, I'm going to meet every situation by the grace of God. I'm going to face every conflict. Uh, I'm going to face every enemy by the grace of God until I have conquered that enemy, until I have fulfilled God's plan in that area of my life. I'm going to meet it. I'm going to face it. I'm going to stand. There will be times you don't even feel like it. I remember when I went through two two breakdowns and of course my family and church family here I was uh, living in Mobile one time and here the second time stood by me there were times that it got so bad you say how can this happen it got so bad I couldn't believe for myself I couldn't I couldn't believe I mean I just didn't at that particular point I didn't have faith but but there were those who knew that I would come out of it by the grace of God and once God started speaking to my heart you know I would trust and be able to come out of that. You know, and then there have been other times when something would come to me and I would have strong faith and it wouldn't take that long and I would overcome it more quickly and sort of things like that. But here I am. How many things have you been through? How, God's been writing your history. He's been writing my history. So when we have to go out, those heroes of the faith, there, there are all different kinds of stories that required all different kinds of things to be done. Unique, individualized, because God determines your path. God determines the course for you. God determines the course for me. And my course is not your course. Your course, now there will be similarities in different things that we go through, but He is going to individualize each and every one of our lives for His honor His glory. That's why Paul could say at the end of his life, although he was not saved in the early years, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. After he got saved, there was a whole different course for him. And, and he said, I have kept the faith. So the keeping of the faith should be the thing of the end when we get down to the end of our life. But he said, the, if many of these afflictions, but the Lord delivers him of them all so anytime affliction comes regardless if it's coming from a straight out resistance from the devil uh, you know and just coming against my life if it's tribulation or persecution arising because of the word because the Bible's already said in the great parable of the sower when the different things where that seed falls and one of them was it says that, you know, a person receives the seed gladly with joy. And then when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, they are offended. How many people do you think are out there that after they got saved because of, it got hard, because tribulation or persecution came, they lasted for a little season, but they're no longer there. But no, the righteous defined as righteous people by God, they remained, they stuck it out. That's why the Lord said one by one, he delivers them out of them all. They take them on one by one. They face them one by one by faith. They don't stop until their faith has released the grace. To, see, the grace force has to be greater than the resistance force, amen? That was one of the things I was thinking about talking on tonight, but you know when they send those guys up in those rockets. You probably heard about the four guys that recently went up the space capsule and uh, they were civilians. First, 
four civilians and they paid $55 million each to go. $55 million each. But once they got in that space uh, craft, in order to get out of Earth's gravitational pull, and of course they were going to have a lot of gravitation on them when they were leaving, but in order to get out of Earth's gravitational pull to get into that other realm, to get in that space realm where there's, uh, you know, I guess hardly any gravity where you can float around. That must be a unique feeling. Maybe not worth $55 million. I prefer to wait till the Lord takes me up. Amen. Amen. He's already paid the price. I'm going to get a free ride. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but once they blast off in that rocket, there has to be more force in that rocket ship than there is in all the gravitational drag of this earth that keeps them earthbound. The power of that rocket ship has to supersede the gravitational power of the earth. And once it escapes the bounds of earth's gravity, they're in a brand new realm. Once grace carries you past your trial, past your affliction, past your failure, by faith, once grace has carried you into that realm, you've entered a new realm of righteousness in that area of your life. Glory to God. So I, I stand here today to say there's different areas of righteousness that people right here are trusting God for tonight, right now. And there, there's, there's other areas of your life that you might have just said, well, this is just natural. It's not going to work anyway. It's so easy for something to crop up in your life where God promised you a blessing, where God promised you victory, and you say, well, and, and, and sometimes it's just easier just to back up and say, well, I accept it that way. I, I've got a lot of good things going for me, but if it's against the plan of God and the blessing that he intended on your life, then it's mine and your responsibility to rise up and say, I contest this. I, I won't accept it this way. I have a better promise. Uh, I have all the promises of God, and it's my responsibility now to stand up on this. But I was saying those heroes of faith, you look at the great men, and then you get down to the latter part of the chapter, you see where faith took them in a different direction. It says some of them were tortured. Some of them wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. They couldn't write at that particular point. They couldn't uh, claim all the blessings of material prosperity in their life. If you're living in a country, I mean, if you're in the U Ukraine right now and you're a Christian, you can't focus in upon some of the, uh, you know, maybe promises that we would in this country because when you're under the covering of whatever principalities are in that nation, you come up under the influence of those principalities. You have a different contest that you've got to face. They're facing a contest of tremendous fear. You know, one of them was standing up today there in Maripol and said, we're probably in our last days, in our last hours. We're outnumbered 10 to 1. There's still civilians there. They've got to believe for something uh, uh, altogether different than what you're believing for tonight. So these people, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, they were not worthy. The world was not worthy of these people. That's how great of Christians that the, the writer of Hebrews said that, that some of these great Christians that were tortured and, and, and they wandered about hiding in dens and caves of the earth. The Bible says, I mean, you, you take all the fancy elite people of this world, the money people of this world, the big shots of this world, they don't hold a candle to that kind of person. The people that's suffering for our Lord and Savior, the people who are being martyred, the people who are being tortured and persecuted, they are so far above these highbrow people in this world that there's no comparison. And so he said it's uh, the afflictions of the righteous. We could go and read a lot of scriptures. Let's see. Let me read just a couple here. Let's see what Genesis 41 verse 52 has to say here. I don't, I'm, I, I, look, every time I preach, every time, and I've been preaching for nearly 60 years. I meet resistance every time before I preach. While I, I'm called to preach the Word of God, I'm confronted with my innate weakness, my inability, 
that without God's help, I don't know what to share with the people at that point in time. I don't just usually pick out something to preach. That's not the way my ministry has been. My ministry is usually waiting on God for him to say, what is it that I need to share with the people? That in itself is a test of faith a lot of times because sometimes you may not know until the very end. And I've stood on the front pew of, pool of churches where I've pastored with my sermon prepared and have the Lord say at the last minute without anything I had studied or any notes, this is what I want you to preach on this morning. So in Genesis chapter 46, we all know the story of Joseph. Look like I'm getting one point here tonight out of seven. Maybe. <laughs> Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, let's see, Genesis 41, first of all. I've said good, bad things. The psalmist said, it is good for me that I've been afflicted. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But so, so, um, so you know, we, we all know that our, as the old song says, uh, how's it say it? Um, uh, prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. But Joseph was down there in exile, and how many years was it before he got this advanced blessing? This was a biggie. Now, some of the biggie blessings of God that we read out in the Bible, how God greatly and mightily used people, they went through years. They went through years of preparation and, and ups and downs and having to come to to points of faith where they could trust God. People like Moses and people like Abraham, these were not just some of, we read about their, their major accomplishments, but the, that took years of, of, you know, having to ward off doubt and uncertainty and God would make them a promise. And they stood in there and, and, and then, of course, they had all the daily things of life like we all have that we don't read about all those stories of their life. But in Genesis 41 and verse 52, it says these words. This was Joseph's testimony. Well, verse 51, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he hath made me forget all my toil in all my father's house. Joseph went through all these things. Could he have evaded and avoided some of the things he went through if, if he had handled his vision a little different when he was young and maybe prideful? Perhaps. Perhaps he could. But God already knew the route it was going to take. Joseph didn't handle it different. He did what he did at that time. And, and whether he could have gotten to where God wanted him to be as a prime a minister of Egypt some other way, Maybe he could have. But in the plan of God, it all seemed like it had to end up happening this way. He called the name of the firstborn Manasseh for God, he said, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction, in the place of my pressure, in the place of my difficulty, after all, look, our first and foremost objective in our life is, is it to know the blessings of God? Well, that's certainly uh, a part of it because the, the Lord wanted to bless man when he created him. But above and beyond that, the first and foremost objective of my life is to glorify my Creator to glorify the God who made me. And whatever is in the, I don't, I don't think the, saying the cards, I, that wouldn't be good, but whatever is in the, in the path that it takes. You know, I was thinking about the Lord's Prayer just uh, two or three weeks ago, um, and, and I got just a little new light there on uh, the Lord's Prayer. I felt like where it said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then we go through and we pray the different things. And nearly every one of those things, the second thing he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, we know his will can't be done unless his kingdom comes. And the other things can't happen unless his kingdom comes. It's the kingdom of God released in us by faith. The kingdom has to come in order for the will to be done. 
but also what is the most important verse in that entire Lord's Prayer. As far as I'm concerned, it's verse 1 because every other part of that prayer is not just for me. It is when they are fulfilled that I hallow His name. Hallowed be thy name. And then we pray the other things. And as those things are accomplished in our lives, his name is more and more hallowed and those people around us in this earth. So it seems bad when we're afflicted. It seems bad when God chastens us. The Bible says God chastens and corrects every son that he receives. He corrects us. Sometimes his correction it's always in love. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's always easy. When he says, you've got to change this. This has to be straightened up. It can't go on this way. You've got to believe me for this. I'm not content with you not trusting me for this. You can't just pretend it, it's a problem that exists and, and not take action on it. I'm calling you to rise up and change this situation. And so... When the Lord chastens us, it tells us not to despise the chastening of the Lord. And so that means we receive it, we embrace it, and we appreciate when God corrects us. <laughs> also, the psalmist said in Psalm Division 4 and verse 1, You have enlarged me when I was in distress. Really? Is this part of the afflictions of the righteous? Lord, I'm in a tight squeeze. Things are squeezing in on me. But yet the psalmist said, you have enlarged me when I was in distress. distress. How many of you know David the psalmist? <coughs> he was open to share about the trials he went through. It's not like he never mentioned that he went through a battle or trial, but he was open to mention the trials he went through. But always he would usually follow it up with something similar to this. But my trust is in thee. My faith is in thee. I remember one place that says, be not afraid of sudden fear. When sudden fear comes upon you, how can you not be afraid? Well, you have to take immediate action to put that G-force against that sudden fear. When you get a bad report, you immediately, you respond. You see, when you become a declared a righteous person and you're a faith-filled person down through the years, the Bible says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. That means a man that's been tried and tested over a period of time in many different areas. It says he will abound with blessings. And so when that, when, when that comes, you have to apply that grace force. He said, you enlarge me. Do I want to be enlarged? Do I want the Lord to make me a better Christian? Do I want the Lord to use me? Do I want the Lord to make me into His image and change me from glory to glory? Well, then sometimes that means being put in that, dis you know, that in that uh, distressful situation where that I absolutely have no other alternative. I have uh, no other answer. I no one can take take it away. I can't deal with it. I only have the hope of trusting in God. That's all I can do. But that's enough. That's more than enough. If we trust Him, He'll determine when our faith is real. And in heaven, He'll put down to our account righteousness. And He and the Father will say, let's release the grace now into this situation. I started to preach tonight on let it rain, but I decided it had been raining enough. But... <laughs> But I was talking about Romans 5, 17. Much more they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the two go together. When you're declared righteousness, then, <coughs> then the Lord will release grace into your situation that you've been believing for. He said they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what? They shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. It says in John chapter 1, I didn't bring, I had Della copy this off from the Amplified, but after I changed my message, didn't bring it up here, but it says in John chapter 1 
Of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. We've received all the grace. It's in our account. The question is, can we make proper withdrawals on that account? And it's not just by signing. It's by applying faith. Faith is the withdrawal mechanism from the grace of God in heaven. Praise God. And then... It's a blessing and it's so good when our faith is tried and tested. When it's tried and tested. Wow. The Bible says in Revelation 1 that God has made us kings and priests to our God. So if that's what he has legally made us, then it behooves us to say, I'm going to live as a king. I'm going to live as a priest. If, if that's my, my legal know, status before the throne of God in heaven, then my experiential status must come into alignment with what God intended for me to be. So I'll probably close with this one here over in the, this precious verse in the, we all know, let's see, I believe it's in First Peter, let me turn over there and read and see if we can. I want to, I want to, I can pretty much quote it, but I want to, I want to get the, the statements right so that we'll know. First Peter chapter one, it says, right up above it, it talks about the great, uh, Reservation that we have in heaven, that inheritance. And, uh, you know, verse 3 about the, uh, he hath begotten us again to living hope and to that inheritance and so forth and so on, all, all those great things. And then he comes on down and then he says, we're in your great rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaven through manifold temptations. None of us enjoy heaviness. Uh, I was thinking earlier this week or week before, sometimes when you're going through a new situation <coughs> of faith, a new situation that we talk about, maybe you're in a new area, and especially if you're physically feeling really bad or emotionally you under heavy assault. Sometimes it's, it's not. It's not easy to rise up and just take an all-out faith assault. Sometimes you just want to just, you know, have rest. And we do need to, as we said before, rest in the Lord. But I've found out in my life, you know, that sometimes... When something comes against me, I will maybe let it tarry for a bit, uh, you know, before I rise up in the strength of the Lord and make the stand I need to make. But the Lord will give you strength to have strength to make the stand. If you trust him, he'll give you the strength to have strength to make the stand when you don't feel like you're up to it or you just can't seem to rise up. But he said, where in your great rejoicing for a season you're in heaviness through manifold. Manifold means you got several things coming at you from a different direction. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. How, how valuable is it? How valuable is it? More valuable than gold. Gold's worth a lot right now. I manage some about sixteen hundred dollars an ounce, and 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 considered, I guess, about the most one of the most costly metals in the world. <clears throat> but he said, your faith has got to be tried to see if it's genuine. Though it be tried with fire, so all true metals and metallurgists they know what it is to try metals precious metals with the refiner's fire. The Bible says the word of the Lord is pure, pure words, is go, uh, silver tried in the furnace of earth, 
purified seven times. That means all dross has to be taken out. So in my case, in your case, God says, I got to take the doubts out. Yeah, I mean, I know you're trying to believe me, but we got, we got to get rid of the doubts. You've got to come to assurance. You've got to overcome the uncertainty. You've got to apply, get to a place of knowledge. I think sometimes we just think, well, if I'm just believing that the Lord can do this, I'm just believing the Lord can do this, I've got faith. That, that, is, not, uh, that is not a certification of faith in the courts of heaven. God has to take the doubts out and remove uncertainty and worry and fear and dread and all the things that go along with it until uh, we're fully persuaded that what he promised he's able to perform. He said that it might be found under what? Praise and glory and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the trial of our faith is precious in God's sight. So some things, oh, I was going to close with one other passage. I believe it's in Psalm 84. Let me turn there and read. Verse 4, blessed are they that dwell in your house. They will be still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Say, I know, I know I'm weak. No one has to persuade me. Seventy-seven years old, and I'm not just talking about getting weaker in a physical body because I've got a mortal body. I'm talking about uh, I'm more dependent on the Lord than I've ever been. If, 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 you know, something is accomplished and done by the Lord, it has to be with my dependence on Him, not on the flesh, not that we're sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. He said, uh, in whose ways, heart, in whose heart, we, what we've been talking about tonight is putting God's ways in our heart. Who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The, the valley of Baca means uh, a valley of weeping. And this is sort of like the afflictions of the righteous. You're going through a valley of weeping, but you're going to turn it into a well. That's what it means by faith to become righteous. You're going to change that weeping situation by faith. You're going to change it into a well by the power of God and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. And when you're turning what seems to be some bad things into good, <clears throat> it may be the middle of the night, it may be over in the morning, it may be, I don't know when it may be, but you're constantly appearing before God. You're going up to that throne of grace in your heart. It may be out loud. It may be in the morning devotional. It may be in the middle of the night. But you are going to appear before God on a constant and a regular basis because He's your very life. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's just recognize tonight, if we're going through a different situation than we've been through before, God's taking us on or allowing us to go on another aspect of our journey. So let's bow our heads and declare and decree that we're coming through it. And if it's a valley of weeping, we're going to turn it into a well. Whatever it is, that our faith is going to be tried and proved to be right. And we, if we need to be delivered out of it, we will be delivered. Because the Bible says when we are declared righteous, we'll receive deliverance out of that situation. Father God, we thank you for your word and your truth. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've brought us all thus far. Lord, it is a fight. Lord, it is a journey. Lord, it is a, uh, it is a journey filled with many and varied uh, ups and downs and uh, mountains and valleys, Lord, that we have to trust you to, to, to correct and, and take us through and, Lord, make them plain and level and all of those things, Lord. We thank you that you've delivered us out of so many things and proven yourself strong for us. And Lord, we're going to trust you all the way to the end for every situation until we can say with the Apostle Paul, I have finished my course. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.